God warned, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Why should those who worship the beast and its mark suffer such punishment? What do the beast and the mark mean? Is it a sign of false god? In this episode, I will answer all these questions. Smash that thumbs up button for me, leave me a comment down below, and share this video with your friends, and let's get started. Al-Hajjar al-Aswad, or the Black Stone, an ancient religious stone in Mecca, Islam's holy city. The stone is framed in pure silver at the southeast corner of the Kaaba, the cube-shaped structure built by Abraham and his son Ishmael, according to the Quran. During the Hajj, Islam's most important annual pilgrimage, pilgrims walk counterclockwise around the black monolith. While the Hajj usually involves large crowds crammed around Islam's holiest shrine, when pilgrims pass by Al-Hajjar Al-Aswad, they usually touch, kiss, or wave. Originally, the stone appears to have been white rather than black. Mankind is thought to have touched the stone and sought forgiveness from God, which is why it is black. By the way, there is also a mysterious meaning behind this stone. What would you think if I said the Kaaba black stone in Mecca is the image of the beast? In Revelation 13.11, it is written, and I saw another beast coming up from the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. Let me analyze in more detail. Another beast is the image of the false prophet. He has two horns, meaning there are two creatures in the false prophethood, not just one person. The ten horns in verse 1 are ten living creatures, so two horns are two living creatures. He is the last word when in the papal office. Some false prophets claim that the image of the beast will be an electronic hologram. However, such carnalism completely disregards the fact that the first beast, Assad, and the second beast, the two popes, are both devils. Obviously, the third object, the image, is also a demon, not just an electronic one. The life within the image is a demon, much like the soul or life in the Antichrist and false prophets. The carnal theory of holograms also ignores Islamic prophecy and the religious history of Assyria, Saudi Arabia and Rome, as well as the importance of the Black Stone of Mecca to Muslims. All Muslims pray to Mecca and must come to touch the Black Stone at least once in their lives. The Black Stone sits at the corner of their Mecca temple, but we know that Jesus is the cornerstone. Muslims believe that the Black Stone of Mecca brings forgiveness and healing to the blind and lame, but we know it is a description of Jesus. It is narrated that Ibn Umar said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Touching both the Black Stone and al rukn al-Yamani is an atonement. To understand the spiritual significance of the image and mark, it's important to recognize that they are both an abomination to the true God and crucial to those who worship a false God. In other words, they are significant for both Christ and the Antichrist. God makes his will about false worship clear in the first and second commandments. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the below beneath earth or in the waters. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. In Exodus 20, 2, 6 NIV. The mark of the beast is the Islamic Shahada was created in the year 666. Some prophecy experts have written that the mark is a barcode on your arm. God does not care about a barcode on your arm. God is concerned about false worship. The mark of the beast is not a barcode on the arm. It's about worshipping a false god. 
Revelation contains eight warnings about the image of the beast, similar to the image itself. Revelation 13, 16, 17, Rev 14, 9, NIV writes, 9, a third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, ten they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. Similarly, Rev 1920, NIV 20. But the beast was captured, and with it, the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. To become a Muslim, you have to wear the Shahada mark and say the following two lines. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The Shahada is not in the Quran and was completed around the year 650, but it is on the Dome of the Rock, which began in 687 and an Islamic coin from the year 685. It is likely the Shahada was created around or in the year 666. Thus, the Shahada could explain the number 666 in Rev 1318. Muhammad the false prophet gave instructions that a dying Muslim must say the Shahada as they die. Islam teaches those who are with a dying Muslim should say the Shahada and following, I have accepted Allah as the God, Muhammad as the Prophet, Islam as the religion, the Quran as the Book Allah and the Kaaba. Jesus warned us about false prophets that would deny he was the Son of God. In Matthew 24, NIV, at that time if anyone says to you, look, this is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs, and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But how do we know that the reports of Jesus' sightings are false? His coming will be known to the whole world, witnessed by the whole world. It is in the Bible, Matthew 24, 27, NKJV. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Likewise, Paul warned Christians about false apostles preaching a Jesus who was not the true Jesus of the Bible. It is in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, 4, NKJV. But I fear that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent through his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted through the simplicity of Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, then you can endure it too. Satan stands behind those who come in the last days as false Christs. It is in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 11.13, 15 NIV. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, because Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Just before Jesus' second coming, a notable false Christ, the one of lawlessness, will visibly appear on earth. It is in the Bible, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 4, NKJV. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the fall comes first, and the man of sin, the son of perdition, appears, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or to be worshipped, to sit as God in the temple of God, calling himself God. What will happen to this false Christ? It is in the Bible, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, NKJV. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will destroy with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the glory of his coming. Why are so many people deceived? They refuse to love the truth. It is in the Bible, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, 10, NIV. 
The lawless one will come according to the ways of Satan. He will use every display of power with signs and wonders in the service of lies, and every way evil deceives those who are perishing. They died because they refused to love the truth and thereby be saved. How can I not be deceived? It's in the Bible, Isaiah 8.20 NKJV. According to the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. But God will return and expose the false God. So how can you tell the difference between false Christ and true Christ? Jesus gives the test in the next verse. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man come, in verse 27. The true arrival of Jesus Christ will be undeniable and impossible to miss or fake. Jesus likens his return to a flash of lightning in the sky, just as the natural lightning that appears above us in the sky is incredibly powerful and cannot be faked. Jesus' return will come from the sky with a display of giant supernatural power and a sight and sound unlike any other human power can produce. A few verses below, Jesus explains further, And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, in verse 30. Power and great glory, that is how Jesus will return. There will be nothing secret about it, but when Jesus said, they will see the Son of Man, who were they referring to? This question is answered in Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye will see him. All eyes. It's difficult to understand how a creature could fly down from the clouds and be seen by people all over the world. But that's how Jesus will return. That is not to say that everyone will recognize him right away. However, everyone on earth will hear a deafening trumpet blast and see an incredibly powerful God, Jesus Christ, riding a horse and emitting energy, glowing white, with eyes like burning fire. The white horse is brave and carries a sword for war in Revelation 1, 14, 15, 19, 12. Don't be confused by any human impostors or anyone who claims that the second coming of Jesus will be anything other than the earth-shattering spectacle described in your Bible. When Jesus returns, you will know it. You won't have any doubts. False gods are mentioned repeatedly throughout Scripture as a source of temptation and idolatry for God's people. Idolatry tempts men to worship something other than God, which can result in spiritual darkness and death. False gods are frequently represented as idols or statues used in religious rituals. They are also known as pagan gods because they are associated with religions other than Christianity. False gods have existed since the beginning of time and frequently reflect human desires and wants. The Bible makes it clear that worshipping false gods is wrong. Exodus 20, 3 states that the Lord God forbids us from having any other gods before him. This includes displaying idols or images of other gods in our homes, as well as worship and reverence for them. Throughout the Bible, we see God's commands to avoid all gods. Deuteronomy 13 commands us not to worship other gods and to completely destroy any places of worship where they can be found. Deuteronomy 12.30 instructs us not to listen to or be tempted by those who seek to lead us astray from the Lord. To do so would bring God's wrath down on us. The Bible also warns about the dangers of worshipping false gods. In Jeremiah 16, God declares that those who worship idols will be punished with death and destruction. In Amos 5.21-27, he warns that if repented of, it will result in judgment from the Lord. We can also see the consequences of worshipping false gods, which only God rejected because they did not follow his commands in 1 Samuel 15. The Bible mentions several false gods, and these have had varying levels of influence on the people and cultures that believed in them. Significantly, one of the major false gods mentioned in the Bible is Baal, who was a fertility god worshipped by many Canaanite peoples. He was thought to be responsible for providing rain and fruitfulness to the land. 
The Israelites often fell into the worship of Baal, and this was one of the things that caused God to punish them repeatedly throughout the Old Testament. In addition to Baal, another key false unknown god mentioned in the Bible is Molech, or Moloch, who also served as a god and was worshipped by many Canaanite peoples. Molech was associated with an act of human sacrifice, particularly child sacrifice. This practice was forbidden by God and was abhorred by the Israelites who were warned to stay away from such practices. The Bible also mentions the false god Dagon, an ancient god of grain and fish. He was a significant deity among the Philistines and his worship frequently included ritualistic acts such as sacrifices and offerings. This false god was particularly reviled by the Israelites, who saw him as a symbol of idolatry that must be avoided at all costs. Throughout the Bible, God makes it known that he is the only true and living God. False gods are mentioned time and time again in Scripture as being no match for the power of him alone. Deuteronomy 4.35.36 says, you were shown these things so you would know that Yahweh is the only true God. There is no other God besides him. From the sky, he let you hear his voice to discipline you. And on earth, he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words from out of the fire. These verses make it clear that Yahweh is the only true God and that all other gods are false. It is also worth noting that in many places throughout Scripture, God instructs his people not to worship or offer offerings to any other God besides him. Exodus 20, 3 states, You shall have no other gods before me. In addition to this, Deuteronomy 6, 14 states, Do not follow any other gods, any of the gods of the people around you. For Yahweh, your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from the face of the land. While the ancient world had gods of wind, fire and water, today's false prophets take many forms. In our modern world of instant gratification, convenience and technology-driven lifestyles, it's easy to overlook our spiritual foundations and prioritize other things over God. Money tops the list. We often get caught up in the pursuit of wealth, using it as a way to find security and status. But when we idolize money, our vision for life shifts away from God and what He desires for us. This can lead to feelings of discontentment, selfishness and restlessness. As Jesus Christ said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In Matthew 6.21 Pleasure we live in a world that places a lot of emphasis on fun and pleasure-seeking activities like partying, shopping, and leisure travel. But this only brings temporary satisfaction and can lead to self-destructive behaviors such as addictions or unhealthy relationships. In contrast, the Bible reminds us that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens in Ecclesiastes 3. 1. Power People often crave power to make themselves feel important or gain control over others, but this can lead to oppression, abuse, and corruption. The Bible tells us that the only real source of power is God, who gives us strength when we are weak in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, 10. Pride. When we overemphasize our own accomplishments or physical appearance, we can develop a false sense of superiority and pride. The Bible warns us, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in James 4.10. Success. Many people define success in terms of material wealth or professional accomplishments. However, focusing too much on these things can cause us to lose sight of the big picture of life. The Bible says that one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions in Luke 12.15. Technology. We often rely too heavily on our phones, computers and other gadgets to entertain us or communicate instantly. This can lead us to neglect relationships and miss out on real-life experiences. The Bible teaches us to be still and know that He is God in Psalm 46, 10, Self. We can be tempted to put our own desires and needs before God's, 
We must remember that we were made in his image and for his glory in Genesis 1.27. The Bible teaches us to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind in Matthew 22.37. False prophets are biblical figures who are frequently portrayed as rivals to God, the Holy Spirit and his authority. While their presence tests our faith and obedience, we must remember that only Jesus is the true Savior of mankind. His power far outweighs any worthless idols or false gods that humans can create. Understanding this truth allows us to avoid being ensnared by false gods and instead place our faith in the one true God to bring us salvation and eternal blessing. Finally, I was prompted by the Spirit to look up every instance in the New Testament where Lambano appears. As expected, it showed people taking, receiving things, until I read 2 Corinthians 11.24, five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Then the light went on. We often receive things that are not welcome, such as news that we've been fired or laid off from our job or an unexpected illness or accident or any number of things. In this case, we have all received that mark or character, the thing stamped into our human nature, engraved into the way we think and as a result of such thinking, engraved into our actions. It's a result of what happened in the Garden of Eden and we are all marked with Adam's nature. We never asked for it, but God subjected us to this condition in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In Romans 8.20, 21. Most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to dread nothing but losing you, and to cast all our anxiety on you because you care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal and which you have shown us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.